While not treated to anything like as much coverage as spoiled brats throwing milk and soup around in the name of saving the world, brave opponents of Iran's theocracy are facing down their oppressor's bullets and demanding change. What might have seemed unthinkable, impossible only a matter of weeks ago, which is to say regime change in Iran driven by a popular uprising featuring in large part women and girls making bonfires of their head coverings, is looking increasingly possible. My next guest tonight is Maya Tausey, YouTuber and political commentator who has been following events there in forensic detail. Maya joins me now. Maya, um, what is the latest state of play in Iran? So we are now on the well, day 37, I believe, uh, 36, 37 of the uh, people's uprising. It's still going on. The, the regime are out of control. The reason this matters and the reason it's very significant, uh, even for the West, is because this is actually the first people's uprising uh, that is uh, so far going against the norm since the French Revolution, technically speaking. In, um, in which way do you mean against the norm? The norm uh, from uh, the, well, that is the, 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 the way the globalism is going and the way certain things that are politically incorrect, uh, so they are fighting against the Islamic regime. Uh, and uh, so that's one thing, and they are leading a movement for a, a, a more free society, and it's not backed by any globalist entity up to a point where, in fact, they are ignoring them. You know, the mainstream media, the Western um, systems that, you know, used to interfere a lot in that region, they are suddenly quiet and silent. And you know, they've been forced to get your Joe Bidens and, you know, uh, your list trusses uh, until yesterday <laughs> to send press releases saying, oh, yes, we will condemn the you know, lack of human rights. Then what? So they're pushing back against the, whatever you want to call it, yeah, the, 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 woke, the globalist... <laughs> Yes. Consensus of the yeah, this 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 um, uprising and and when uh, the BBC every uh, few months talks about it, uh, you know, for ten minutes they call protests. They're not protests. It's an uprising, and it is actually continuing to uh, fight for uh, liberty and self determination and secularism and democracy. Uh, and uh, they have already they finally um, unified the movement, the Iranians. Uh, this is actually creating a very libertarian movement. They've uh, written a manifesto, uh, different groups, and a pre-written constitution, basically. Uh, and uh, it's essentially, the slogans um, and the chants are woman, life, liberty, man, nationhood, prosperity. Maya, do they have an actual leader? Like, do they have a leader that is... Yep. This, they do? No, but it's a yes and no, in a sense right. that... Uh, before, until now, all these uprisings failed the attempts because there were so many different factions. Yes. And they, they weren't really different, it was just egos. It's sort of like what we have in the political system here. And on the one hand, there are no militant factions, so they, they, you, you, you don't have the fear of a potential Libya or Iraq. Right. But it was all egos, and now they don't really have one leader, but it's working for them. Well, is that because there is there a fear of being a leader for this group? Because will yeah. they succeed? No, so there is a, a, a leadership in terms of entity. There is a National Council of Iran right. uh, in exile, led by the crown prince in exile. So there's a, there's a government in waiting? Uh, essentially, or transitional government. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, their aim is to, and they've got the consensus of people, they want to have a referendum, get rid of the Islamists, have a referendum, and uh, potentially on a ballot paper, we're going to have a couple of options, constitutional monarchy or a secular uh, a republic of Iran. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Keep in there. Yeah, but so that's all well and good. But what about the uh, Bar G C, uh, sorry, Bar C G, uh, who oh, are yeah, the revolutionary, you know, the guards. revolutionary guards, yeah. effectively, aren't they? They're like the yeah. youth movement of the revolutionary yeah, guards. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the youth, yeah. yeah they, well, I wouldn't <laughs> say that, but, uh, you know, that... They are. They have a very effective way of suppressing all this sort of yeah. thing. And how, how are they getting around that? Because they will track them down and find we, them. We, we, we were waiting for that. that they, they were supposed to be crushing that three weeks ago, four weeks ago. And there has been blood. There, yes, absolutely. There, there, there has been um, definitely bloodshed, but in a very um, uh, kind of less focused, in a more kind of out of control way. It's just panicky. They've had, we've had ev evidence, I've got evidence, uh, videos of uh, the police, security forces, armed forces, and a few revolutionary guards defecting, uh, putting their membership card, burning them on camera. So they are losing their people oh. up to a point where the regime have gone to get uh, uh, militants from uh, Iraq and Lebanon to come to Iran and beat up their own people. <laughs> and that is disgusting. But may what you were telling me in the green room, I'm yeah. horrified they're raping women. Yeah. So that they don't make it to heaven. Yeah, so, well, yeah, one of the policies they have, unfortunately, is uh, if, if they arrest a, a young woman who is a virgin and if they're about to kill her, 
they, they, they have to rape them before they kill them because otherwise they would go to heaven. And that wow. is like the most disgusting thing. Oh, wow. I can't believe this is happening. Yeah. What some, what, it, it's, all, it's all quite m- mind-blowing in a sense. Yeah. One thing you, you just said, that one potential shape of the, of the future as mm-hmm. envisaged by yes. the uprising, a constitutional monarchy. Yeah. I mean, that, that means they're going back in time, all the way back to where Iran was yeah. in the 1970s with the Shah. Or, or, or just before that, because that period between the 50s and 79, uh, uh, it became less constitutional monarchy uh, because of, since the coup. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it became slightly more absolute monarchy, but it was supposed to change back to constitutional monarchy, but the Shah didn't have time. But it, it, it's whether it's going to be a Republic of Iran or a constitutional monarchy, it's the same system for them. They want to basically have the head of state non-political. They want to have the head of state just essentially be symbolic and that the parliament and parliamentary democracy is uh, what they are seeking. I think most people looking in at Iran from here imagine it's a, a, a majority yeah. uh, Shia Muslim country. <laughs> what, what are the, the demographics and the political and religious uh, factions or splits within the country? The official data that was even confirmed by uh, our beloved United Nations is uh, that less than 40% of uh, Iranians are Muslim. And wow. uh, there is a small chunk that declared, you know, Christian, you know, a tiny percentage uh, Jewish and, you know, atheist. But there's a big chunk that just uh, didn't answer. And the theory behind it is that that's the big what? chunk is basically Christians and Jews who are scared to even declare uh, for mm-hmm. these uh, kind of uh, the, the surveys and everything else, it is. It, what would it? What does it mean? I mean, I'm asking you to use the yeah. crystal ball. <laughs> if if this uh, regime was to fall, sure. and if something like a, a, a secular yeah. a constitutional monarchy or a republic was or to be established in its place, what might be the repercussions in the region and in the wider world of that happening in Iran of all places? And this is, I think, one of the reasons that I see you know your Biden administrations and the Western governments. Uh, are kind of cautious or scared. On the one hand, they're, they're afraid of all the, the previous interventions that made a mess in that region. On the other hand, I could see from their perspective, they'll be so confused because um, the reason we are close to Saudis is because enemy of, enemy of is a friend. Mm. If, if Iran becomes free and Iran comes to the West and says, not like, you know, um, oh, let's be best friends, but more like a Switzerland, let's just be allies. And then you can have Iran and Israel go hand in hand. And then what are you going to do with the Saudis? They're going to be angry. And we've got all these contracts and everything else and we're going to shake their hands. So they, they, the Americans need to then change their policy <laughs> unless they manage to get the Saudis and Iranians to sit down and be like, can we all just be friends? And I don't that see that happen? happening. Yeah, that I don't see that happen. <laughs> exactly. And then, so- and then the Iranian regime is is with uh, Hamas and Hezbollah. And, and Hezbollah. What, yeah. ha- what happens then in, in terms of, uh, you know, Israel yeah. is obviously very, uh, yes. very watchful, to, to, you know, to, to use a softer word, around those groups. Yeah. If the if the regime's support of those organisations <laughs> was to be well, no more, what, yeah. what would it, happen there? It will defund Hamas and Hezbollah and uh, it will make Jeremy Corbyn even more unemployed. Uh, you can't go on the, uh, Iran press TV to uh, talk nonsense about, oh, let's just basically um, say that it's a one-sided fight. Uh, all Israelis and the Israeli government are the bad people. Uh, there's no nuance in this debate right now. And both sides sometimes get aggressive. You've seen the Israeli government going aggressive as well. It's because there's no nuance. So Iranians are staring the pot as usual, like in Yemen as well. You get rid of that, you make it easier. Narendra, you had a question you wanted to ask. I cut in on you there. No, it's fine. Um, so you feel that this will succeed? Yes, the beginning women of the will end. get their freedom? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, but Iranian women had their freedom years ago, and then it, this, yeah. it's gone backwards. I'm astounded by that. It, it, it is a fascinating history. The, what happened in 79 was the, the, the actual uprising was led by the, the commies that were led, connected to the Soviet, and uh, they were very violent. And towards the end of that uprising, just before the Shah left Iran, uh, it was stolen by the, the Ayatollahs, uh, and then you know, the Khomeini came and said, look at me, I'm the old man, I'm going to give you basically socialism, free oil, free bus passes, but... I'm the old religious man. Hey, would you trust me? All these infidel, uh, atheist commies. And people fell for it. And people it, fell for it. Oh my yeah. God, people always fall for yeah. it. I just find that that's, that's, that yeah, exactly. has you, ruined women's lives. Most of the time, we open the door to tyranny and we don't even realise mm-hmm. it. And we have to be careful in the West. And, and the this CIA turned a, a blind eye because, and then they indirectly backed it because they didn't want the Soviet to control this new regime. Mm. But the, the Islamic regime got the power day one, death to America, and wait until the Soviet fell, and then now they're best friends with Russia. <laughs> what do you make, how do you interpret the 
I, I described it as lukewarm and cursory mm -hmm. coverage of what's going on yep. in much of the West. I mean, it is, it is appearing, you know, online and, and yeah. in newspapers, but there's no depth. No. It, it's, as you say, it's just being described as just any other protest. Yeah, exactly. Um, How do you interpret that? I mean, uh, people like me my channel, and actually thanks to you guys, uh, people like yourself, uh, we kept pushing and pushing over the last uh, 37 days. We are starting to see some coverage, but it's some coverage. They, on the one hand, I've talked to some um, people who are in production with Leo BBC and Skies. They are confused, they're scared, because they, they, the way they will cover it it would sound like the Iranians are Islamophobic and Iranians are uh, kind of outspoken. They're saying, if you're in Iran and you see what's happening, it's not Islamophobia, it's Islamotrauma. You know, we're, we're not against Muslims. We're just against, like, this uh, tearing that's happening. It always comes back down to Islamophobia, which oh, you yeah. sorts up because in India we had the Sikh protest, yes. the, the farmers protest. That didn't really make media either. And that had exactly. nothing to do with, no, but it had nothing to do with Islam. No, we're no. Indian, though, so I don't think it is that. But it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's tiny percent at least that. It's more than that. You're right. It's, um, it, beyond Keith, that, it's just... Keith, can I just let you come in there before we Thank finish? Because I think you had yeah. something that you well, wanted to add. Uh, yeah. So we've talked about the Russians, we've talked yep. about the, um, the, Americans. the Americans. So who who is actually funding this yep. this oh, re question. recent uprising? Who is funding it? And well, who, who yeah. is looking to gain the most from it? If you listen to the Iranian regime, they would say Britain and America. Uh, and some people are falling for it. This, for the first time, uh, of all these, obviously, theories and, you know, plots that's happening, uh, this one... Well, you, you can never tell. There will always be one or two in every establishment that would be involved. But in terms of wider support, uh, there is absolutely no interest uh, right now from um, you know, Britain or America or others. Um, any, any, well, the one group that could actually be interfering in the name of supporting the people is actually Israel. They might be staring apart a mm -hmm. little bit. Mm -hmm. But there is no um, foreign force in an obvious way because the Iranians who are doing this, they are very sensitive people. They do not want to be backed by any kind of foreign mm -hmm. forces. The moment they find out, they will push back, and then they've done in the past. I'm going to have to jump in there. Meyer Tizi, YouTuber and commentator. It's an amazing story, which surely has a long way to go yet, and yes. I hope you'll come back and bring us up much. to date with it as it goes. So fascinating.